everybody it's rain and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to ply using a drop spindle I've gotten a few requests for how to do this or if it's possible and yes it is possible and you can ply on a drop spindle so there's two different ways you can go about it probably the simplest way to go about this is to use two separate singles and ply them together like so. You can also ply from a center pull ball using the middle center pull end and the outside end and ply those together like that. That is what I'm going to be showing you today but if not I recommend doing the first method by just spinning your singles remember which direction you spin them in such as clockwise or counterclockwise make sure you remember that write it down if you have to in your notes I always keep notes on my spinning trust me that's a good habit to have is to keep notes on your spinning so fill your spindle up in one direction and then wind it off onto a bobbin or into a yarn ball and then fill your spindle up again in the same exact direction once again and then wind it off into a yarn ball or onto a bobbin and then you'll have an empty spindle ready to ply those together so I have my trusty ball winder from Knit Picks here and I'm going to make myself a center pull ball and just make sure you go nice and slow if you have enough twist in your single it should not snap or break or get weak at all I personally would rather have too much twist in a single than to not have enough because if you don't have enough you probably will have to go back and re-spin it when in comparison if you have a little too much twist you can kind of set that and thwack it after you finish the plying process and get that little bit of extra twist out so to take it off just keep one end in your hand and grab your middle end and I like to keep them together in one hand and then gently pull the ball off of the winder with my other hand that way we have our two ends at an equal distance and they're ready to go so this is going to be your hardest part at least in my opinion this is the hardest part of the entire process so I'm gonna go ahead and make a slip knot using my two ends and just put my little hook through those ends through that loop of the slip knot so that I don't have to worry about it coming off. You don't have to do this, it's completely not necessary, but I'm just going to do it for the sake of it being a little bit easier and for it not to come off. You can always undo that knot when you're done. So you have to make sure that you're going to ply your singles in the opposite direction that you spun them to start with. If you spun them clockwise, you want to ply them counterclockwise and vice versa. I'm going to link a really, really good video up in the cards right here for you to check out if you need to know anything about spinning on a drop spindle. So you just want to add a little bit of twist and I always keep my fingers in between the two plies. And the reason why I recommend using two singles instead of a ball is because of this. The ball can get tangled up in your hand and it can just make a really big mess of plying. If this is your first time plying, I definitely recommend just using two singles. And you can just have your two balls of yarn in a yarn bowl or you can just have them on the floor in front of you, you know, however you need to do it on a desk. And then that way you don't have to worry about twisting the center pull ball in your hand as you go. So I like to keep my pointer finger and my thumb stretched out and keep a nice long point. And as you can see, when you give it a twist, it'll just start working its way up that V and it'll start pulling the plies together. Just like so. And you just keep letting it feed like that. And you'll eventually get some nice gorgeous twist in your two ply. One of the more difficult parts of drop spindling is keeping your tension the entire time. The whole time we wind it on and we're letting it drop, we need to keep the tension in the plies so that it doesn't flop around. You'll get pigtails and it will start twisting back on itself and make a big mess. Try to keep it tight and keep your tension as you go. 
Now if you're getting a lot of pigtails, then you might have a little too much twist in your yarn. Make sure to try and be as even as possible, like so, when you're wrapping it on. That way your spindle does not get unbalanced. It can get a little wobbly if it's a little too off balance. So just wind it on as so even as you can. And then we'll come up here to our ball and I'll go ahead and split those plies, get my fingers in between them, open it up a little bit, and then you're good to start adding spin after you hook it on to your hook at the top. And it'll start feeding up that V just like so. So of course I'm going to show you a little bit of troubleshooting because most of you are beginners and you might have a few of these problems along the way. As you can see right here, there's a little bit of over twist there. So what you want to do is open up your plies and start untwisting the opposite direction with your other fingers and get down to that knot and we can watch it come right out. See there? It twisted over itself. So give it a little bit more back twist and then untwist it and let that yarn uh, retwist and it'll redistribute nice and evenly across the rest of the yarn after that. So that's if you get like a knot that's a little bit um, messed up, you know, just a little bit twisted onto itself. Now this yarn has a little bit too much twist for me, so I'm going to show you how to fix that. All I do is let go of my drop spindle and just let it spin backwards. And it has so much twist, it'll start spinning backwards and I like to run my fingers down the length of the yarn and then let go of the end and let that twist fly out a little bit. And as you can see, this looks much better and much more balanced for the singles that I spun for this yarn. And the cool thing about a center pull ball is when you get to the end, you just have a little loop that you can put right on your hook and you can keep it right like that. Usually I like to let my singles and my plied yarn rest for about a day or two. This is not necessary, but I always do it. I find that um, it helps it settle a little bit. It's got a lot of high energy right now, right, right after you've plied it. So I like to let it sit a day or two before I go ahead and um, set the twist with a uh, wash. So here is just a sample that I spun up for you to see. And if anybody's wondering, this is CVM Rommeldale wool. Now for the rest of you that have watched up until this point, you will get to see a lot of the up close technique. This was a really hard video to film, as you can probably tell, and I'm trying to show you how it works its way up that V that we open up. Here's my center pull ball, and I'm going to show you my technique that I use right here. So I have my pointer finger through there, through my plies. I'm going to spin it, come up here, and start using my other hand to untwist that center pull and then work my hand that has the plies opened up up a little bit. It can be really hard to get the hang of doing the center pull ball your first time so I don't recommend it. I recommend doing the singles like I've said but I want to show you my technique here. I'm using two separate colors so you can watch it. See you have to untwist that center pull so that it doesn't get all messed up on itself. And you can kind of pull it down with one hand. Just do what you got to do to get it to work for you. And the good thing about a drop spindle is they are so, so forgiving. Like, don't fret. Just take a deep breath. If you mess it up, you can unspin it or you can add more spin and, and just redo it. Like, it's not that big of a deal. Drop spindles are absolutely 100% beginner friendly. I started out on a drop spindle. I always recommend people to start with a drop spindle just so you can get a feel for the fiber and the drafting of the fiber and the way that it plies together and the twist angles and you can get a feel for all that before you get a wheel. So that's about all I have for today. Keep an eye out on my Etsy shop. I actually am going to have some drop spindle kits available very, very soon. And I hope y'all love that. 
And also, thank you so much for my first sale on Etsy. Y'all have a wonderful day. You can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, rainfiberarts.com. Bye-bye.